All right, let's go ahead and get started again. Hey, guys. I'm glad you're having such a good time, but let's go ahead and get started again. So, we're going to talk about iOS versus Android. Not really versus, but iOS and Android. And we're going to kind of compare the two and see how they, uh, how the actual programming of a simple app looks on these two competing platforms. So just to kind of get all my bias out there, I've used all three. I use OS X, Linux, and Windows all on a daily basis. So I think there are definitely pros and cons to all of them. As far as programming them, all three are actually very well supported by the companies that, uh, that develop them, of course. So we have Windows or Microsoft making Visual Studio, we have Apple making Xcode, and we have Google releasing this thing called Android Studio. And all three of them are pretty great, um, pretty great development environments. Although Android Studio does fall short of Xcode and Visual Studio um, in a couple places, uh, I prefer to write with Visual Studio or Xcode if I can, because um, honestly, I have kind of a bias against Java. But we'll see that anything that you can do in one, you can do in the other. Everything is, uh, all the platforms have pretty much future parity at this point. So we're going to blitz through creating a new app, which is going to do very simple things, like we push a button, it updates a text label. We read in from the accelerometer and update a progress bar with that. And so we're going to do that on Android and iOS, starting with iOS. So iOS, of course, uses a completely different language than C Sharp or C++ or anything like that. It's going to use something called Objective-C. So Objective-C is Apple's C Sharp and Java competitor, of course. It's what they use for doing like a graphical user interface programming on the Mac OS desktop. Um, funnily enough, it looks like it's being replaced by a new programming language called Swift, which was announced about eight hours ago. <laughs> um, but uh, they will continue supporting Objective-C for a long time, I'm sure. Years, at least. Uh, the syntax is pretty different from C and C++, though, as we're going to see. Uh, a few years ago, I made a cheat sheet describing some of them, so that link will take you to the cheat sheet showing how to do some simple things in Objective-C, basically everything you need to do to make it a, a simple uh, iOS app, but we don't need the cheat sheet because we're going to just type it ourselves right here. And so we're going to look at Objective-C and Xcode and iOS, and lucky for me, I'm running a Mac, so we can actually run it because this stuff doesn't run on anything about Mac, of course. So, in this iOS demo, we're going to first create a UI with a text button, or sorry, a text button and a progress bar. We're going to create a button behavior to change text, and we're going to add in some accelerometer functionality. So let's start by opening up Xcode. This is the solution, so we'll just tell it to go away again. And we are going to create a new project, an iOS application, which is a single view application. This is basically the analog to that um, template chooser that we always go through in Visual Studio when you're creating a new uh, C Sharp application. Boy, this is really fun. Let's try unplugging it and replugging it in. There we go. So, we're going to create a new single view application. We're going to call it my first great app. Um, Everybody except Microsoft asks for company identifiers in this format, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's called reverse DNS format. So if you were a company that had like mycompany.com, then your uh, applications would be called com.mycompany.appname or something like that. And this is the identifier that identifies this app from all the other apps in the world. So this has to be unique. So you can see here, my product name is my first great app. My company identifier is that. So then it's com.staticflow.myfirstgreatapp. So if you want to, say, publish a second version of your application, it has to have the same identifier here. Sorry, the same identifier here. Otherwise, it will look like two different apps in the App Store. Now, if you have the same project settings you know, over and over again, of course, it's going to have the same one. 
but if you decide to start from scratch or something, you just have to have the same bundle identifier. And that's the same in iOS and the same in Java. That's how they you know, identify one application as being different from another. Yes? The class prefix? Uh, I can. It's just got a default of nothing. And we can decide if we want it to be for iPad, iPhone, or Universal. We'll say Universal because we're not prejudiced. <laughs> so we'll create this on my desktop. And we have a interface that looks like this. We can open these kind of side tabs that are pretty much exactly like Visual Studio. So over here we're going to have like um, things like what we consider the toolbox, what we consider the properties. Over here we have what we would consider the, the solution explorer. We've got a project file up here. And inside here we've got all of our build settings. We've got our capabilities just like we would in that WM app manifest thing. So this is where you go when you get those access denied exceptions, that kind of stuff. I'm going to hide this for now. So here you can say like, oh, I want to be able to use maps. Or, oh, I want to be able to share audio with another program. So this is a really advanced form of audio sharing, actually. This is for like, you have a guitar app, and you want to pipe it into your digital audio workstation on the phone itself. So you can actually have one application's audio be used as an input for another application's audio, which is kind of cool. Um, you can say, like, oh, I'm making a game, so I want to use Game Center, or I want to have iCloud to back stuff up, all that kind of stuff. Blah, 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 we don't care about it. Here we can change our version number, our name, all that kind of stuff. Hooray. So let's take a look at the code. The code is split up into a couple different files. There's a supporting files folder. That basically means you can ignore it. We've got appdelegate.h and .m. We've got viewcontroller.h.m. This is exactly analogous to app.xaml and app.xaml.cs and mainpage.xaml and mainpage.xaml.cs even to the point that we're just going to ignore app delegate for now and we're only going to look at view controller because that's like the main page and that's where all the good stuff is happening. We also have uh, main iPhone and main iPad dot storyboard. These are where the user interface stuff is stored. So these are like our XAML files and these are our um, C sharp, or sorry, Objective C header and Objective C implementation files. So let's first take a look at the iPhone.storyboard file. I always double click on things, but when you double click, it opens it up in a new window, and I don't really like that. If you single click, it opens it up in the same window. So what we have right now is a completely blank application. So if we just run it, and we run it inside of an emulator, it's going to pop up a 3.5 inch iPhone Retina emulator on my computer, which looks like, oh wow, so my, my screen right now is so low resolution that I'm not sure it's going to work properly. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to quit this. Usually it, it looks like an iPhone. So I'm going to quit this, and I'm going to try and set myself to a slightly higher resolution. So bear with me for a minute. Ba, 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 ba. We will 